On the news tonight, Nigeria restates commitment to ensuring security and stability in the ECOWAS sub-region. report submitted to the National Economic Council indicates non-remittance of 526 billion naira to the Federation account by revenue generating agencies. The recent spike in the number of flashes between farmers and herdsmen are not unconnected with demographic, environmental, social and economic dynamics. Participants at a town hall meeting suggest the way forward on farmers' herdsmen clashes. And on special assignment, correspondent examines the significance of Ramadan. A very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Elizabeth Stober in Abuja. Hengino John Adams joins me from Lagos and Agatha Eguari Ojo is in Benin. Nigeria has restated her resolve to collaborate more effectively with ECOWAS countries towards ensuring security and stability in the sub-region as cross-border crimes continue to pose more challenges to governments and, other, and their people. President Muhammad Buhari stated this at an audience with the new ambassador of Guinea-Bissau to Nigeria, Mr. Henrique Andriano da Silva, shortly after receiving his letter of credence. State House correspondent Adam Usambo has details. Apart from the ambassador of Guinea-Bissau, Henrique Adriano da Silva, President Muhammad Buhari also received the letter of credence from Mr. Watana Kungwongsi of Thailand. Exchanging views with Mr. Da Silva of Guinea-Bissau, President Buhari explained that Nigeria is fully involved in the process of restoring stability in his country. The relationship between Nigeria and Guinea-Bissau, the president said, had always been healthy and as the West African country regained stability, more room would be created for improvement. Mr. Da Silva said his country remains grateful to Nigeria for all the support it received during the prolonged political crisis. As he puts it, we cannot thank Nigeria enough for its commitment to peace and stability in Guinea-Bissau. To the Thais ambassador to Nigeria, Mr. Kungwose, President Buhari said Nigeria and Thailand have a lot to share in their ongoing effort at diversifying the nation's economy through agriculture. Nigeria, he said, fully appreciates the support being received from Thailand in the development of agriculture and promised that the coded relations will be sustained. The Thais ambassador to Nigeria, Watana Kungwongse, said Nigeria's position as a regional power puts it on the spotlight for Africa's recovery and stability. He expressed the belief that under President Muhammad Buhari's leadership and guidance, Nigeria's economic fortune will be enhanced and the entire country gets strengthened. A colorful and befitting diplomatic ceremony organized by the Presidential Guards Brigade was put together to formally welcome the new envoys to Nigeria. Also on Thursday, President Muhammad Buhari engaged the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Burtai, on the nation's security situation. We will continue to operate along with other security agencies that have uh, been charged with the responsibility of securing our country to achieve the uh, strategic uh, objective of uh, the government. And I'll be rest assured. Um, our operation last hold will, will further consolidate the overall successes that we've achieved in the Northeast. Now we hope the internally displaced persons from that area will go back to their communities and uh, pick up their lives again. General Burutai's meeting with President Muhammad Buhari, which lasted over 30 minutes, was held behind closed doors. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Now, finding a lasting solution to the herders' farmers' clashes was the main thrust of a special town hall meeting organized by the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. This was necessitated by the growing concern the situation has generated. Anthony Forson reports. The town hall meeting, although had the traditional setting, 
the format was different. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, set the stage. I want to say that the recent spike in the number of clashes between farmers and herdsmen are not unconnected with demographic, environmental, social, and economic dynamics, as well as sheer criminality. It will be too simplistic and indeed a distortion to attribute the clashes to ethnic and legal sources. Then, a special paper presentation on the historic perspective of Hartsman Farmers Clash, which dates back to 1948. The paper presenter, Ibrahim Shehu Birma, after chronicling the Fulani Hartsman Farmers Conflict, cited urbanization as one of the factors that has dislocated arrangements that were put in place to cater for the nomads. That loss of authority has added up to an existing problem. The above and other factors affecting the house one has made him vulnerable, and thus he sees himself the only capable person of subverting his interests. To this end, he called for the return of grazing reserves as against ranching, saying any solution preferred should consider past attempts like nomadic education as well as the psyche of the Fulani herdsman. Then came the question and answer session. In the interim, pastoralism for our pastoralists is a way of life. Uh, this is what they saw their forefathers do, and this is what they are doing, and this is what they love their children to also do. To change it, it has to be a gradual process. We should look for solutions. Most of what is wrong, we all know. The solutions is what we are dodging away from. Who is bringing in Chadians? Who is giving them the logistics? Let's go back the drawing board and do what is right. Because when you talk, government should do this. Government cannot do everything alone. The ministers present took turns to respond to the questions explaining the federal government's position and efforts being made to bring to an end the crisis. The grazing reserves, the crisis are being handled mostly at state level. The federal government does this right by imposing or supporting what the states are doing. NEMA is redesigning the settlements in the villages to bring more communities together so that people don't live too far apart. Otherwise, you don't have enough security to guard every settlement. The creation of militia and vigilante, particularly by state governments. And example we have, even in Benue, the Teshaku, which has been mentioned, who has been linked to Boko Haram activities. And we had a robust program on how to map out stock routes, how to uh, rehabilitate the grazing reserves, regazette them, uh, provide amenities for the people. But this problem uh, that has bedeviled this country of lack of continuity of programs and, pro and, 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 and policies uh, has been one of the major issues that creates problems for us along the way. We are living in peace. We had abundant land. We have abundant resources. But these resources are reducing and our population is increasing and then add that to issue of climate change add that the issue of the drying of the Lake Chad in the northeast this brings to 12 the number of town hall meetings the federal minister of information and culture is organizing as a deliberate way of reaching out to the citizens and feeling their pulse in Abuja Anthony Forson NTA News a technical audit report submitted to the National Economic Council at its meeting in Abuja indicates that 526 billion naira was not remitted to the Federation account by the revenue generating agencies. The report also contains another $21 billion not remitted. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi has details of this and other issues raised at the meeting. Well, it is. Double trouble for the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation as it is once again indicted by an audit report submitted to the Council. Just on Wednesday 16, 2018, the National Economic Council Subcommittee, looking into remittances into the Federation account by the NNPC, said the federal government and the governors were not convinced by the increment of fuel consumption in the country from 30 million liters a day to 60 million liters a day, 
as claimed by the NNPC. The concern here is that when there is no cost recovery, the NNPC clearly give us the number of 30, 33 and 35 respectively million liters per day that the consumption of Nigeria. But now in the new regime of cost recovery, the NNPC is claiming 60 million barrel and 60 million liter, 65 million liter a day, which we said no. At the council's meeting, another subcommittee presented a report of a private auditing firm which found the organization culpable of failure to remit into the federation account. And the recommendations of the ad hoc committee, including a resolution to identify instances where there appears to be infringements and forward search to the Attorney General of the Federation and the Legal Committee of the National Economic Council for further action. Council resolved to pursue strengthening of the NNPC governance structure to prevent further recurrence of such growth under remittance by the NNPC and other revenue generating agencies. Council was also briefed by the Nigeria Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council for partnering with the private sector on the industrial agenda. The briefing was to present eight initiatives and recommendations that require state's government's intervention. Resolving the multiple taxation, facilitating the access to land, providing uh, security for investment, standardizing the regula uh, deliberatory requirement, participating integrated business uh, leakages, collaboration on projects, development, providing the share facility. Council also commended the courage and commitment of the president and vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Vice president is the chair of the council in ensuring property property in the management of the finances of the nation by allowing the probe of the federal government agencies and completing the audit report as these actions promote transparency and the anti-corruption efforts of the administration which the council recognized and commended. As the Minister of Budget and National Planning, I briefed council on the just concluded ERGP focused labs which were conducted successfully. Minister of Finance gave the balance in the excess crude account as at May 14, 2018, as 1.8 billion. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NT News. And the recent decision of the Cross River State Government to abolish all forms of taxation on low income earners is not only to provide economic relief for the citizenry, but also boost small and medium scale enterprises. Governor Ben Ayade, who said the policy was necessitated by the current economic realities in the country, stressed government's determination to fully implement it. Udwak Etim has details. The abolition of taxation levied on low-income earners with less than 50,000 naira monthly income is a decision by Governor Ben Ayade aimed at ameliorating their sufferings. The governor stressed that his administration would rather tax his intellect to prosperity rather than taxing the low-income earners and warned that those collecting the taxes to desist from it. I abolish tax for the poor people. For the low-income inner, I had warned anybody who is collecting money from KK Nape, from taxes, it is illegal. Cross River State has abolished all those taxes. It has given us an elevated platform of authority to use our intellect and support them, not to use the authority and deal with them. And therefore, I put a last warning. I don't want to hear anybody who earns less than 50,000 naira being taxed in any form. Governor Ben Ayade recently announced the abolition of all forms of taxation levied on the low-income earners in Cross River states. In Calabar, Udwak Etam, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has called on leaders of the All Progressives Congress, APC, to build a united front that can propel the governing party to victory in the forthcoming governorship election in Ekiti State. Addressing the Southeast leaders of the party, the president emphasized that everything must be done towards ensuring that this time around the will of the people is not subverted. State House correspondent Adam Sumble has details. 
It was an interactive dinner between President Muhammad Buhari and the Southwest APC leaders as well as stakeholders aimed at charting the best way forward for the party as the governorship election for Ekiti State draws near. In attendance were Vice President Emi Oshimbaju, members of the National Working Committee of the party, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Chief Bisi Akonde, Southwest Governors of the APC, the governorship candidate, as well as the aspirants. President Muhammad Buhari, who described the election as crucial, noted what he called the hunky-punky that attended the 2014 gubernatorial election in Ekiti State, recalling the first-hand account from some of the dramatis personae in the unfortunate saga. We must do everything to ensure we do not allow any subversion of the will of the people this time around. Now that we have a candidate, all hands must be on deck to achieve positive results. I want to appeal to all of you to see this as a collective mission to restore equity and promote development. The president who commended the candidate, Dr. Fayemi, for reaching out to his core contestants with a view to working together is worried that the values of forthrightness Kando and integrity equity people are known for seem to have been lost, insisting that the fountain of knowledge must be returned to its pride of place in the committee of states. The return of equity into the fold of progressive states is going to be a key pointer to subsequent elections. On my part, let me assure you that you can count on my support. But charity must begin at home. I urge equity leaders and the leaders from the Southwest to take this assignment seriously. Let us return to the field to work hard and deliver victory to our great party. The session continued behind closed doors where questions, observations and suggestions were taken. Former interim chairman of the party, Chief Bisi Akonde, speaks on his impression. Equity belongs to APC. Yes, and it belongs to the progressive from the beginning. But unfortunately, it slipped. This time, we are all going to be behind our party to bring equity back, you know, to progress. Equity governorship election comes up on the 14th of July this year. From the State House, Adam Sambu, NTA News. President Buhari in a meeting with Southwest leaders there. In the meantime, the 2018 state congresses and appeal committees of the All Progressives Congress have been inaugurated. National Organizing Secretary of the party, Senator Osita Izunaso, advised members of the committee to guard against practices inimical to the party's guidelines. Salih Abdullahi reports. The state congresses committee has five members for each state while the appeal committee has three members for each state. The Congress's schedule to hold on Saturday this weekend is one of the major activities preceding the party's national convention, holding in June. At the inauguration ceremony, National Organizing Secretary Osita Izunaso reemphasized the need to uphold standard and the party's rules during the exercise. Please, you don't have the power to postpone the election. Because national convention is close by, so we want to conclude this exercise as quickly as possible. In the course of discharging the duties, we're also going to use the opportunity to galvanize support for the party. As far as I'm concerned, there is nothing wrong in Imo. It's a, it's a normal procedure that uh, people that uh, happen not to be successful can uh, channel their grievances. The APC state congresses are expected to produce 32 officers as members of the state executive as well as delegates to the national convention in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Ahead on NTA Network News tonight, National Refugees Commission gives respite to internally displaced persons in Wasa. We'll bring you details in just a moment. Stay with us. Super Outlook MTN gives 2,000% bonus for reactivating your MTN sale. Huh? 
That's right. If you haven't used your MTN SIM for 45 days or more, recharge now and get 2,000% bonus. That's right, 2,000% bonus for your first recharge of every month. Hey, Adu. Look, I got something for you. A football chassis? Hey, Adu. Come watch a game with your uncle and I. I'm okay, thanks. So, Daddy, you showed those blues Pepe yesterday, right? You sure did. Those three points are sure for us today. The game's about to start. <laughs> Quickly! The Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiation, Stakeholder Sensitization and Consultation on the agreement establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area across the six geopolitical zones will be holding in the North Central on the 18th of May 2018, time 9 a.m. Venue, New Banquet Hall, State House, McCordy, Benue State, South East, 21st of May 2018, time 9 a.m. Venue, Imo Concord Hotel, Oweri. For more information, visit www.notn.gov.ng. Whenever pain occurs, you want quick relief. Try new Nurofen Express. It goes to the source of pain and gets to work in under 15 minutes. That's why Nurofen Express delivers fast and effective relief. New Nurofen Express works at the source of pain fast. Being a mom is great, but when your child has a fever, you don't know what to do. I trust Nurofen for Children to take care of my child's pain and fever. Effective relief you can trust. The management of NT Abuja Channel 5, the producers of Sahul Life on NT, a cordially invite the general public to the 15th anniversary of Sahul Life and Ramadan lecture, scheduled to hold as follows. Theme, Islam and Peace, date, Saturday 19th May 2018, third Ramadan, 1439 after Hijra. Time, 9 a.m. Venue, Main Auditorium, Shehu Musa Yeradua Center, Abuja. Guest speaker, Ustaz Nuruddin Lemu. Topic, Peace, the Real Message of Islam. Second speaker, Ustaz Abubakar Sadiq. Topic, Peaceful Coexistence in a Multi-Religious Society. Lessons from Sahul Life on NTA. Chairman of the occasion, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Dambezaw, retired, Honorable Minister of Interior. Special guest of honor, Al-Haji Lai Mohammed, Honorable Minister of Information and Culture. Father of the day, Al-Haji Idris Musa. Sarki of Jua, Chief Host Malam Yakubo Ibn Muhammad, Director General NTA. Come celebrate with us as we mark a milestone in the history of your darling program, Sahu Live. Management announcer. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Thank you for staying with us on NTA Network News. Now, as Ramadan fast commences, Muslims across the world have been converging on the various places of worship in their neighborhood to seek more knowledge for spiritual upliftment. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports that President Muhammad Buhari was at the Aso Villa Mosque for the recitation, translation, and interpretation of the Holy Quran for proper guidance. The chief imam of the mosque, Abdul Wahid Abubakar, enjoined the Ummah 
to be more caring and generous, especially to the poor and needy, as exemplified by Prophet Muhammad. He expressed gratitude to Allah for freeing the president of his ailment and wished him good health. He thanked Nigerians for fervently praying for him and the nation towards overcoming prevailing challenges for sustainable growth and development. The chief imam urged the faithful to submit to the will of God at all times and prayed for peaceful elections. Meanwhile, Muslims all over the world have commenced the Ramadan fast after the sighting of the new moon. Musbaud and Wahab reports on the significance of this religious act as one of the five pillars of Islam. Muslims all over the world have been waiting anxiously for another month of Ramadan. And when the new crescent beams to signal its arrival, we receive it with a sense of fulfillment and excitement. That's the usual spirit for these Allah's injunction. Ramadan is prescribed upon all the believers, Muslims, the followers of the Prophet Muhammad, as it was prescribed upon those people before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is an injunction so sacred to the faithful, primarily to observe the daily fast from dawn to dusk while the month lasts and feel the burden of the less privileged. But scholars say Ramadan fast goes are beyond abstinence from food and drinks. It is time for the Muslims to reflect on the essence of their being, humanity, and strengthen the bond of brotherhood. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan perfectly will have his previous, his past sin forgiven. Described as a month of total package of kindness of God, Malam Sheo Usman says the faithful must explore the benefits of the holy month through the recommended act in line with the practice of Prophet Muhammad. The month of Ramadan is a month of prayer. I will call upon every Muslim in this country, even non-Muslim, that we should pray for our country. Physical and spiritual preparations have been intense. Muslims are also shopping for the provisions required, while different species of dates have been patronized as the most recommended edible for breaking of fast. It's a month of blessings, it's a month of great reward. However, the aged underage, the weak and those insane are exempted from the fasting. But those who have been longing for the special month of spiritual dedication are so fortunate to witness it. They are saying, Marhaban Yara Mudan, welcome the month of Ramadan in which the Holy Quran was revealed. In Abuja, Musbao and Wahab, NC News. And as the Muslim faithful begin the holy month of Ramadan, the All Progressives Congress, APC, wishes all Muslim faithful a Ramadan filled with peace and blessings. A statement by the Publicity Secretary of the APC, Balaji Abdullahi, urges Muslims and indeed all Nigerians to use the period to pray for continuous unity, peace, prosperity and the general well-being of the country. Guests on NTA's current affairs program, Moment for Thought, are advocating right attitude in building a better Nigeria as Muslims begin the Ramadan fast. They noted that inherent in Ramadan are the values of piety, discipline, unity and sincerity of purpose. Islam teaches us that God accepts faster the prayer of a person that prays for his neighbor without the knowledge of the neighbor hmm. god will give him god will grant the neighbor what he has prayed for him and give that person double what he prayed for his neighbor Interesting. during fasting when there is true repentance in one your temper must be controlled you must only say that which is truthful hmm. and you must only say that which builds not that which destroys the program comes up tonight at half past 11 on the network service of the NTA. The National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons is collaborating in collaboration with NISA Premier Hospital is providing medical intervention to internally displaced persons in Basa, a settlement which is about an hour's drive from the Federal Capital Territory Center. Tim Dima, DBC, was there now. 
Costa Internally Displaced Persons Camp, set up in 2014, has an estimated population of more than 5,000 persons displaced by insurgency in Boronu, Adamawa and Yube states. We are facing lots Sarah, 29-year-old nursing mother, tells me that the widespread illnesses here are malaria and typhoid with increasing cases of high blood pressure after effect of insurgency. So, the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons is partnering NISA Premier Hospital to provide treatment. We are treating acute injury, illnesses and providing immunization services. Today is World Hypertension Day, so we decided to use this day to mark the day as well as to reach out to these uh, people that might not have uh, access to basic health services. This is not the first time the Commission is bringing aid to this vulnerable group whose means of livelihood is limited. Two months ago, she bring like 137 grinding machine to help our women with farm, so she, she bring chemical. For now, the community is grateful to the federal government and other philanthropic organizations for remembering them. They are, however, appealing to relevant agencies to facilitate their return to their ancestral homes. In Abuja, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. Ahead of the November General Conference on Weight and Measures, to agree on one of the largest changes to the international system of units. The world today marked the 2018 Meteorolo Metrology Day with Nigeria actively participating. Experts from the Bureau of the International Weights and Measures speak on the day. Nigeria is the most, uh, the largest economy in Africa uh, and to us it's very important that uh, Nigeria has just become a corresponding member of our organization. Um, that means that they're able to begin to participate at the world level in terms of uh, the legislation that on metrology in the country uh, and it, it has an, uh, an effect on everybody's life across the whole spectrum from individual consumers through to industry through to even the national economy. So, uh, And it matters absolutely everywhere in your life. It matters in the environment, in manufacturing, in your daily life as well, uh, health, environment, just everything. And the ability to measure allows you to add value in the country. And at the moment, so in collaboration with SON, we are setting up a new metrology institute, first time in the country at Inogo. And we are developing the pressure lab, temperature lab, and uh, electrical labs. We are hopeful that soon they will be operationalized. And uh, Nigeria will get the uh, right traceability and the right uh, quantity with respect to these areas. In now, if the commitment of the federal government to information technology is sustained, the technological gap between Nigeria and developed countries will soon be breached. Minister of Communications Adebayo Shitu said this at a media chat to commemorate World Telecommunication and Information Society Day. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports. In recent years, there has been significant progress in artificial intelligence technology made possible by tremendous advances in big data, machine learning, computing power, and cloud computing, which have been used to improve healthcare, education, agriculture, finance, and transportation. Minister of Communications Adebayo Shitu said federal government is committed to ensuring that the nation is carried along. To create and strengthen the national AI ecosystem for sustainable development in our country. The ministry would also encourage cross-sector, cross-agency and cross-border collaboration by developing unified standards for emerging AI sources and interoperability. Director ICT Muninola Udo said Nigeria will soon become smart. There is huge uh, support from the federal government in terms of one, uh, dedicating a technology corridor for you know, development, research, innovation and all of that. And the ministry is also keen into that by uh, designing a national ICT park. ITU urged users to take advantage of the revolution for sustainable growth. Adebola, 
Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has denied the accusation in some quarters, claiming that he orchestrated the recent arrest of some youths in Kwara State by the police. Lai Mohammed, in a statement by his special assistant, Shegwa Deemi, said the arrest has nothing to do with the Ward Congress in his hometown, Oro. He said suspected cultists were recently arrested and paraded by the police in Ilorin, adding that the police in the exercise of its constitutional responsibility does not need to be guided by anyone to carry out arrests where necessary. Concerning the outcome of the election in his oral ward too, Lai Mohammed says he has made his observations on the conduct of the election known to the appropriate party authorities in line with his strong belief in the rule of law. Partnership to advance security on the sea leads contribution from our Lagos Network Center tonight and Hingino brings us details. Over to Good evening, Elizabeth, and it's good to have you join us in Lagos. The development of the non-oil sector of the Nigerian economy is a deliberate policy of the federal government to promote the agriculture and manufacturing sectors of the economy. Minister of State, Agriculture and Rural Development, Senator Henneken Lopobiri, says more private sector investors are needed to diversify the economy. Paul Omokago has details. The minister was speaking at the commissioning of two privately owned fishing trawlers in Lagos, promising incentives and enabling environment for investors interested in the fishery subsector. Senator Lopabri explained that government has made remarkable achievements since 2015 as it now produces 1.1 million metric tons of fish for local consumption and exports. He added that with a gap of 2.5 million metric tons still to be met, government can only support and pave the way for certification of private firms and the production of seafood. We're going to be reducing you know, the licenses for fish import. What we did last year, we gave less than one million metric tons. At the end of the day, those who were able to import into the country were only about 500,000 metric tons. With a backward integration policy where we said, look, if you invest in aquaculture in the country, we will give you a uh, fish quota to import. A lot of people are, you know, investing. A lot of companies have already made massive investment in the country. And that is why you saw the almost 100% increment. The chief executive officer of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Shegun Awolowo, said the plan for a zero oil economy will be pursued vigorously. The idea is that Nigeria can and must survive in a world in which it no longer sells oil. That means we identified about 22 sectors all across and many of those sectors are agricultural sectors, about 19 of them. The high point of the event was the official inauguration. In Lagos, Paul Omukagu, NTA News. The Nigerian Navy Western Naval Command has taken delivery of 20 patrol vehicles from the Lagos State Government in support of Operation Awatsi. This was at the Western Naval Command Headquarters at Papa, Lagos. Mohammed Abdul Kadri reports. Operation Awatsi has brought relative sanity to its area of responsibility, especially Majidun, which was a notorious transit route. Operation Awasi was conceived and launched by the Nigerian Navy in October 2014 to curb pipeline vandalism and illegal dealings in petroleum products. The glory of God and for the benefit of mankind. The 20 unit vehicles are expected to boost the deployment of personnel in fulfillment of the mandate of the operation, which is to strengthen internal security. Our administration will continue to support all security agencies operating in Lagos State to ensure that we continue to provide adequate security for the lives and properties of our residents and investors in Lagos State. I want to give kudos to the Lagos State government for making it possible to accept the military as part of force multiplier. The need for enhanced security on inland waterways to checkmate sea piracy and hijacking of merchant vessels as well as kidnapping were discussed at the event. In Lagos, Mohammed Abdelkadri, NTA News. 
You're still watching NTA Network News. It's time for some messages. The news returns shortly. Do stay with us. Every hot chocolate three in one. A delicious combination of rich cocoa and wholesome goodness of milk. Just add hot water to get an instant chocolatey treat. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. Just at home. All TVs say picture quality, but never mention the most important color, black. It uncovers the hidden details of nature, brings out the richness in all colors, and reveals life. With self-lighting pixels, only OLED TVs make perfect black. And perfect black creates perfect color. LG OLED TV. Makes a Niger mom powerful. I encourage my kids to learn new things. And if they get hurt, I rely on the power of my Dettol's one capful. To fight germs, my family needs protection from germs. I use the power of Dettol's one capful to disinfect surfaces and clothes. I trust the power of Dettol's one capful for bathing. The power of Dettol's one capful protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be a powerful Niger mom with Dettol. African Association for Public Administration and Management, AAPAM, in collaboration with the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCOM, wishes to invite Chairman of Commissions, Heads of Service, Commissioners, Permanent Secretaries, Chief Executive Officers of Parastatos, Chairman of Local Government Administrations, Honorable Speakers of State Houses of Assembly, Top Management Staff of Military and Paramilitary Organizations, Senior Officials of the various Embassies in Nigeria and other international organizations to its three-day international conference on African development. Theme, African Agenda 2063, the role of the public service in transforming potentials to realities. Tuesday, 29th to Thursday, 31st May 2018. Venue, Ascon Complex to Pobadagri, Lagos. Conference fee, 200,000 Naira per delegate. For further inquiries, please contact GA Afolayon, Chairman, Local Organizing Committee on 00331-82344. Or J.O. Dada, Secretary on 00231-612-81. For more details, see the Daily Trust newspapers of Monday 7th May and Punch newspapers of Wednesday 9th May 2018. Announcer, Director General Asko. Thank you for staying with us. Turning to the business world now, Bank of Industries unveils plans to simplify and remove bottlenecks from loan procedures to small and medium scale enterprises as value added tax for the first quarter of 2018 increases. Details with Moplang Dakok on business. And welcome to Business News. We begin with plans to simplify loan procedures for medium, small and micro enterprises in the country. The managing director of the Bank of Industry, Olusha Gumpitan, says the bank has opened discussions with the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, Smidan, and the Nigeria Export and Import Bank, Nexim, to de-risk its loan portfolios to small-scale businesses and also embark on SME's rating in order to ensure easier credit lending to those that meet risk acceptance criteria. The value-added tax VAT data for the first quarter of 2018 indicates that 269.79 billion Naira was generated. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that this represents 6.17% increase quarter-on-quarter quarter and 21.87% increase year-on-year. Manufacturing generated the highest amount of VAT and closely followed by professional services. Commercial and trading generated 16.58 billion Naira, while mining contributed the least, closely followed by pharmaceutical, soaps and toiletries, as well as the textile and garment industry. Wednesday's rebound on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange was short-lived as it depreciated Thursday. At the close of trade, the All Share Index dropped by 0.83% and the market capitalization of listed equities dropped to 14.7 trillion Naira. On the price movement chart, 
Sovereign Trust Insurance recorded the highest price gain of 9.09%. CCNN led the loser's chart. It was followed by Sterling Bank and African Alliance Insurance. And that's the package. Thank you for watching. I am Moplang Dakok. Thank you, Moplang. And Agatha and Benin will now give us details of deliberations on the petroleum industry bill in Edo State. Agatha. Thank you, Elizabeth. Good evening and a warm welcome to Benin. Governor of Edo State, Godwin Obasek, is proposing a livelihood sustainability program to address developmental gaps in oil producing communities. He made this known when he received members of the National Assembly Joint Committee on Petroleum Industry Bill. Good Luck in Nine reports that they met stakeholders in oil producing communities on the impact of oil exploration. The governor who decried the poor state of affairs in oil producing communities described the visit as timely as the state is working on a bill that will deal with issues that affect oil producing communities in the state. He said the state government is embarking on an enumeration exercise to ascertain the impact of oil exploration activities on oil producing communities. The governor added that the state government is planning to utilize the energy sourced from some of the communities to power companies that will be located in the state. We are hoping that the laws will be such that at least we can utilize those energy sources to power economic activities in the locality. Chairman of the committee, Senator Tayo Alasho Adura, said the visit will afford the affected communities in the state to make input in the three related proposed bills in the National Assembly and commended the state government for taking a step ahead. In Benin, I am good luck in any NT News. To religious matters now, Muslims have again been reminded that the period of Ramadan is a time for spiritual rejuvenation. This was the focus of the eighth annual pre-Ramadan lecture organized by NTA Benin Network Center and the state chapter of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. Adobaji Ujigbai reports. The month of Ramadan as a holy month is the day Allah reveals the first chapter of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad. They fast, abstain from pleasures, and offer prayers to remain close to God during and after the Ramadan. Some of the fundamental conditions for a Muslim to benefit from the virtues of this great month of Ramadan must put hand together to see the success of Islam in a state, in Nigeria, in the whole world. Five pillars of Islam and we have learned that purity is paramount. It's a special month, and there are do's and don'ts. And we wish them to be committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to involve the state government in serious prayers. Islam is continue learning until the end of your life. Some of the Muslim faithful said the lecture afforded them an opportunity to further understand Ramadan in Benin. Adubaji Ojigba, NTA News. That ends our package. Elizabeth, it's back to you for more reports on the network news. Thank you, Agatha. Now, the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, and Nigeria's National Park Service are collaborating to create standards that will ensure safety of humans and animals on Nigerian highways. The two organizations came to this resolve during a visit by the Conservator General National Park Service Ibrahim Musagoni to the FRSC Corps Marshal Boboye Oyeyemi in Abuja. Governor Taala reports. The Conservator General was at the FRSC headquarters to seek collaboration with the Corps and also create awareness on the activities of the National Park Service. Ibrahim Musawani believes that support from the FRIC will go a long way in helping the agency fulfill its mandate of preserving and managing vegetation and wildlife. Vehicles are used to convey wild animals, whether dead or alive, called in Nigeria popularly bushmeat. If some of these vehicles are intercepted with bushmeat, our attention can easily be drawn and at least with collaboration, we can mitigate this kind of situation. There are designed 
corridors on the highways that animals can cross and appropriate signs supposed to be placed but because of the vandalization over a period these signs have been removed damaged or destroyed so we are going to work now with the cg national park service and the honorable minister federal minister of power works announcing so that we identify the, you know, on, on the road map Boboye Oyemi, who requested for detailed information of the agency's corridors across the country for joint efforts at having a standard operating procedures, also promised provision of necessary training for officers of the National Park Service. In Abuja, Grabu Muhammad Natala, NT News. The necessity for Nigeria to rid itself of corruption is not negotiable as the present reality shows the devastating effects of corruption. But to achieve this, there is need for national consensus to integrate the traditional and religious institutions as well as the citizens in the fight. This is the opinion of various authorities at the second anti-corruption situation room. Ali Tuko reports. Fighting corruption is the obligation of every citizen because everyone's future is tied in one way or the other to how they deal with the menace. To achieve this objective, human and environmental development agenda in collaboration with National Orientation Agency and other organizations put together an anti-corruption forum. The forum is to create a platform for civil societies, media, citizens and government institutions to ensure that the fight against corruption becomes everyone's business. There's um, nowhere in the world where the fight against corruption is won by um, just government institutions or government policies. It is by the people. This must not be an elite affair. Journalists must pass the civil society organization to go out there and mobilize the Nigerian people to fight corruption because our people are the victims of corruption. The forum is to also look at the mandate of the special presidential panel on the recovery of public assets and see how citizens can engage the panel to ensure effectiveness and transparency. In Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. A bit on sports after this timeout. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 